Dr. Bazit, I need to ask you this question now because we have come into the, um, the, the later stages of your academic career. So after a quick search on your thesis, we understood um, that you, you kind of wrote on K-theory and, again, I don't really understand this, but two tuples or, or something <laughs> like that. Anyways, the question here is maybe you would kindly, you know, kind of dumb it down, of course, but kind of explain your thesis. Because I think like the idea, I was just reading like the brief, um, what's that? Like your first part of your dissertation. Your like abstract. That, yeah, like the abstract, exactly. Like the abstract. And I was kind of understanding the idea, but maybe you would want to, you know, portray it to, to the audience. Absolutely. Yeah, let's hear it. So my thesis is really in a field called algebraic topology. And so, so maybe I'll say a few things about what is algebraic topology, because this thing that, that I, I specifically focus on called equivariant K-theory is just an example of an algebraic topology field. So, okay, so we talked earlier about how topology was the study of spaces, but where we were allowing sort of a lot of fluidity to it. Uh, in other words, there, there wasn't the rigidity of lengths and angles being preserved. You can imagine everything sort of made out of Play-Doh and you can move it around. You can't tear it. <laughs> you can't cut it and put it like you have to do continuous things. A reasonable generalization of the word continuous, as you would know from calculus. So if you're just a topologist, let's not talk about an algebraic topologist. If you're just a topologist, you're interested in studying these types of, of, of objects. And you want to make delineations. So I'll give an example. Uh, let's imagine you take a rope. And you take the rope and you tie a knot of it and then you re reattach the ends of it. So what I imagine is, is you have some circle, but you've now also introduced a knot to it. Okay, if it's a very simple knot, I could do a knot and Parker could do a knot and Ray could do a knot and we could glance at them if they're simple and we'll be like, no, they're different. Like this has more crossings than that one or this one, you know, or it could be that our knots are the same. And if you just sort of massage them, like they're, they're oriented in, in space a little differently the exact spot on the rope where the knot is, like how tight it is could be different. But if you massaged it, you could, you could transform between our three knots. What do you do if the knot's extremely complicated? Like hundreds of different overlap. How would you even know whether Parker's knot was the same knot as my knot or there was the same knot as Ray's or, or whether they were all different? So one of the things that we want to do, that, that's referring more to a field called knot topology, which is a real field, K-N-O-T wow. topology, <laughs> not N-O-T topology. <laughs> But it gives, illustrates the idea of the type of question that somebody in topology might be interested in. And then uh, secondly, you could imagine a, a similar type of thing you might be interested in. Okay, you could ask, well, how many holes does an object have? So if I look at a, a normal circle, a, a little one-dimensional circle living in, say, two dimensions, you could be like it has one hole and a figure eight would have two. Okay, we sort of understand that idea. But similarly, you could ask, with what if it was really complicated shape, like a Klein bottle or you know any or something even much more complicated than that? How many holes does it have? Can you can you use that to sort of distinguish between two different uh, spaces? Like, and the core question to apologies: you have two different spaces, very different representations. They sort of the way like the formulas perhaps you've written down or the way these spaces originated might be very different, but are they the same? So an algebraic topologist comes in knowing some tools from algebra. Okay, so algebra is, you know, things that, that are, you're talking about, like, for example, the integers have algebraic operations on them. Like you can add integers and you can multiply integers and those properties have different types of rules to them, right? And you study all of this in the field of abstract algebra. So algebra is a very concrete field. You, you're talking about things like integers or two copies of the integers, like, like Z cross Z, for example or the rationals cross the rationals, the types of things we've been talking about. So there's a certain rigidity to it. So the idea of algebraic topology is, can you put these together? Can you, for example, find some association between a, a topological space and some algebraic thing? Well, I think you sort of can. So as an example to illustrate this idea, okay, imagine you're, you're taking a, a loop, what we call S1, a one-dimensional circle, you're thinking, I want to continuously map this onto all sorts of different spaces. So the first thing you might map it onto is you can imagine, I can take the one dimensional circle and let's see if we can, let's see if I can do this all in audio and make it all make sense in audio. Take a one dimensional <laughs> circle 
I want to map that one dimensional circle onto a two dimensional sphere. So like the surface of the earth. So this is like me taking a pen and drawing like the version of a circle, but it would be on the surface of the earth. Now to a topologist, because there's no, if I'm, live, if I'm walking around the surface of the earth, I don't see any holes. Okay, maybe there's a hole that is the inside of the earth, but that's sort of a different dimension level of analysis. If I'm walking around the surface of the earth, I don't see any holes. And so I can imagine if I take my little loop, I could shrink it up to a point. And because there's no holes there, and I'm allowed to sort of stretch things and shrink things in the field of topology, it's all very, very weird. I could imagine shrinking to the shrinking it to a point. Does does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I could yeah, I could see that. Raise by me for now. Okay, so now yeah. let's imagine <laughs> we're on the surface of a donut. Okay. So uh, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And, and what I really mean here is the two-dimensional surface of the donut. Okay. So I could talk about, for example, there's the central hole of the donut, like where the Timbit got taken out if you're in Canada. I know what that <laughs> reference refers to. Um, and then there's also like the center of the donut because I'm, I'm only imagining it's two dimensional shell. Okay. So now let me take my pen and I'll draw another circle around the, that central hole of it. Well, I can't close that, that, that circle up, can I? can't close it up in the same way I could close up the circle that was on the, on the sphere. I can't imagine shrinking it because it, it has to stay on the surface of your donut. <laughs> so how, how can you shrink it? Because there's a hole there. It can't get around the hole. And in fact, there's another hole, which is if you imagine going around, like you, if you take a bite out of it, <laughs> of the donut, so not the central hole, but the fact that, that the surface has sort of a volume inside. And if you go around that volume, there's likewise, you could draw that little loop around it would look a little bit like a ring and you can't, you can't collapse that one either. It's not like in the sphere where if you draw the equator, you just move everything up to the North Pole and then it, it, it vanishes. So if I said that the donut is a little bit like the integers crossed the integers, there's sort of an association there that makes sense because I could go around the central hole n n number of times or in reverse n number of times. That's kind of like one integer, one sort of uh, uh, type of it. And I could go around the holes around the edges of it. And so there's sort of, when I try to think about all the different ways that I could map a circle into a torus, somehow, and I have to be precise about this, but somehow the answer of the integers cross the integers is a sort of a reasonable algebraic object to associate to this. I mean, if you imagine mm -hmm. two donuts smashed together, for example, maybe you'd be like the integers cross the integers cross the integers, and that would be different. And you'd be like, okay, they're different this way. So but is it illegal to just to just draw the circle like on the side of like if you have a torus you just draw the yeah. circle like yeah so if we drew it on the it, side is that not allowed uh, you can draw it and it would collapse to zero in the same way it would collapse to zero in the sphere on the sphere right because yeah. it, it would be it would have to be in the center for it to not be able That's to right. wait real quick though this might I don't know this kind of like backtracking a little bit because yeah. I was just thinking about this and I never I thought maybe it would make sense as the explanation continued but I was just wondering. <laughs> How okay this I don't know if this is really stupid but I do have to ask this because I just I don't want to get more confused in case I'm understanding mm -hmm. this wrong. You said circle and then you said one dimension is mm. Yeah, is, so is that's, a circle that's not a, two yeah, dimensional. A, ter a terminology point you're quite right. So let's define something more precisely. Let's talk about S1 which I will call the one dimensional sphere. Colloquially we call that a circle. When, we're, when we say the word circle, we think about one dimensions, but, but I'll call it S1 for the one dimensional sphere. One representation of this in the Cartesian plane is all the points that solve x squared plus y squared equal to one. Yeah, so that isn't that, isn't that two dimensions right there though? X oh, I see your point. Yes, like, it depends on- That's what the I'm not understanding. How can you yeah, call right. this a one dimensional object? Mm -hmm. So it's the difference between the object itself and the space in which that object is living. So if I imagine I'm an ant on the circle x squared plus y squared equal to one, well, I can only go in one direction. I can go counterclockwise or I can go clockwise. Oh, okay. So yeah, from the perspective weird. of the ant, it's one dimensional. It is intrinsic to the sphere, it's one dimensional. You're completely correct. This is in, the way I chose to represent it was embedded in the two dimensions and a specific you know, uh, coordinate system. Mm -hmm. Obviously not the only way mm -hmm. you can talk about a circle. 
So in the same way, okay, what's S2 in Cartesian? X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared, squared equal to one. It's a two-dimensional surface. Cause like, if we think of living on the surface of the earth, we're like, I can go north and south and, or that east makes, and west, two dimensions. But of course okay. we live in three dimensions. Okay. So I can talk about the n-dimensional sphere as well. Mm -hmm. So this is the context in which I'm, I'm, I'm sort of describing this problem. 